no chips for me today. I'm off on a walk. And yes, that is another castle. Well, hello and welcome. And today I'm going to do another walk in South Wales. I'm actually going to walk from castle to castle. I'm starting here at Newcastle, which overlooks Bridgend. And then I'm going to walk down to the River Ogmore, along the River Ogmore, ending up at Ogmore Castle. That's what I love about names. This place is called Newcastle, but it was built in the early 1100s. As the Normans advanced through the Vale of the Morgan, the River Ogmore became a natural frontier between the invading Normans and the Welsh, and they built Ogmore Castle, Coity Castle, and this, the Newcastle, overlooking an important crossing point on the River Ogmore. Well, trust me on this, all the leaves are on the trees and you can't actually see the river. But that's where I'm going to walk later and walk along the banks of the River Ogmore down to Ogmore Castle. When I stand at the entrance to the castle, you probably can see why it was such a good position to guard the river. That road there, I don't know if you can see the cars crossing. That's a bridge over the river. All these castles in the area were built by the legendary 12 Knights of Glamorgan and they were loyal to Robert Fitzsamon. As a kid, I knew all their names, de Londres, de Granville, de Turberville, not because I was a history buff, because where I went to school in Porthcawl, at the time they were building a new estate and all the street names were named after these knights. Anyway, before we start a walk, let's take a look round. Newcastle in Bridgend. What the hell is that sound? The entrance is quite elaborate. It's probably built in the 1180s by Henry II. And this royal connection probably explains why it was so well built. Look at the money. So next to the entrance is the South Tower, probably the tallest bit of the castle still standing. And just over there, you can see the footprint of the West Tower. So this is where the West Tower would have stood. And this outer curtain wall was probably built in the late 12th century. And in front of me, there on the grass, would have stood the keep. So the original 12th century keep would have stood somewhere in the middle here. As you come into the castle, they've got some information about the 12 Knights of Glamorgan there, and also the castle itself there. Typically for these castles, as the Normans invaded, they built them quickly as ringwork structures out of wood. Then later, in the 1100s in this case, they replaced the outer defences with a stone curtain wall and a central stone keep. In this case, there's no sign of the keep. There's no ruins at all. So that's where we are. The elaborate entrance built by Henry II. That's the South Tower, West Tower, and that's where the keep once stood in the centre of the castle. It's all happening in Virginia today. So I'm now leaving Newcastle and walking down Newcastle Hill to join the River Ogmore. On the way, I'm going to walk past St John's House. This is the oldest house in Bridgend, over 500 years old. Normally it's open to the public a couple of times a month, 
but due to the current situation it's been closed for over a year. Hopefully when this comes out they would have reopened it. So check out their Facebook page and the website to get the up-to-date information. So down Newcastle Hill to the River Ogmore. I'm now in Bridgend, and that's the River Ogmore behind me. Back in the 1800s, during the Industrial Revolution, that would have been running black with coal dust, but now it's much cleaner. You can see the bottom. There's lots of wildlife along the river banks. But what does annoy me, especially when you get towards the sea, the mouth of the river, is fly tipping. The number of tires that have been dumped in this river. A word for those. Anyway, enough moaning, on with the walk. So not far from the river, on the floodplain, I'm actually in front of the Jen Bowles Club, is this standing stone. It's actually a Bronze Age standing stone, and it didn't originally stand here, it's been moved a short distance when they built a road. And when they excavated where it stood, they found the cremated remains of an adult underneath. It's actually next to a, a COVID testing unit. <laughs> anyway, for me, I'm not going to hang around here too long because it's next to a COVID test centre. <laughs> I'm going to carry on through the woods alongside the River Ogmore. So I'm now heading south out of Bridgend, alongside the River Ogmore on the western bank through these woods and on the other side are Newbridge Fields. I don't know if you can hear the kids playing, it's half term. And this comes out on the A48 and before the M4 was built it used to be the main route across South Wales. And it's been a major route for thousands of years. Parts of it were used by the Romans and in excavations they found remains not far from the A48 that are probably parts of a Roman road. So that's where we're heading. So I've crossed the A48. The footpath is well signposted, but be careful, it is a very busy road. And now walking along the River Ogmore, and this comes out at the New Inn Bridge. When you do walk, you get to see things you miss when you're driving. Not far from the New Inn Bridge, better known as the Dipping Bridge, are these bizarre rock formations. This is the New Inn Bridge, built in the 15th century, and it's better known as the Dipping Bridge, simply because, see the holes in the top? Apparently farmers used to push their sheep through there for their seasonal dip in the river. And near this bridge used to stand an inn. It was an infamous inn run by a character called Cap Koch, and he used to rob and murder travellers. They used to stay there. I've got more about that story and other ghost stories and legends of the Morgan coming up at the end, so stay tuned. So I've crossed the River Ogmore, I'm now on the eastern bank and I'm going to head a short distance east past the crossroads that takes you to Merthyrmau village and about 
30 yards past that is a footpath that takes you across some fields towards Ogmore Castle and it goes past an old settlement known as Verville. I think that's the way you pronounce it. And it's within that, there's a place called Verville's Dyke, a scheduled monument. Yep, you heard me correctly, Verville's Dyke. So let's get going. So not far up from the Dipping Bridge, you get to the crossroads. A48 that way, Murthamau Village that way, Iweni that way, and we're going across that field towards Ogmore Castle and past the ancient settlement of Verville. Well, as you come across the fields, you go past the ancient settlement of Verville and the farm there is still called Verville Farm. And it, between the two rivers, Ogmore Iweni, is this Verville's Dyke. It could be a defensive barrier or it could be some other earthwork. It's believed to date from at least the medieval period, if not older. And it is a scheduled ancient monument. Over the years, it's been used for farming and it's, it's been ploughed down, so the original structure was probably much bigger. So from here, it's down to the river and to Ogmore Castle and the Stepping Stones. So, I finally reached Ogmore Castle, one of the three castles around Bridgend, along with Newcastle, I came from, and Coity, that were built to protect the Normans and Glamorgan from the Welsh to the west. This one was built in the early 1100s by William de Londres. I have done some other videos about the castle, about the history, and also some legends about this area. I'll put a link to those at the end. I will have a quick look round, but as you can probably hear, it's busy, it's half term, the sun's out, and the place is full of kids. So I'm going to have a quick look round, then head back home. So I've made it, castle to castle, from Newcastle in Bridgend, along the river to Ogmore Castle. What you could do now is either go off to Merthamau village, explore that and walk back to Bridgend, go back the way we came, or take this road to Iweni Priory, explore that, then back to Bridgend. But I'm not going back to Bridgend because Mel dropped me off. I haven't got a car. I need to get back to Porthcawl. So my route takes me over Merthmau Dunes, Newton Burrows, back to Porthcawl, another four miles. I have done a video about that walk, and I'll put that link below, and also about other places in this area, as well as some ghosts and legends videos. So check those out below, and there's a few at the end. So until next time, that's a bye from me. Bye.